eight. I'm Stefan from Richards Auto Electrical. Today I want to show you our plug and play electric brake harness for the Topro Red Arc electric brake controller. And we're going to fit that to the latest model Toyota Hilux Rogue. The brake harness consists of a plug and play wiring loom, an engine loom, and also an instruction manual, some connectors, mounting brackets, and the insert for the Topro control knob to be inserted into the Hilux dash. Some tools that you will need to complete this job. As much as it's plug and play, you will still require a pair of crimping pliers, a pair of side cutters, some zip ties, and then perhaps some, some other tools like uh, screwdrivers, uh, some tape, and a pair of cutters. We anticipate this job to take somebody approximately an hour and a half to complete. So let's pop the bonnet. This is the firewall grommet. It's on the passenger's side of the vehicle and we're going to use the spare tube to feed our wiring through and into the cab. So the plug and play loom comes with multiple connectors and terminals already terminated on it. We want to start by locating these four silver loose terminals, okay, and they belong in the black plug. We first have to feed these through the firewall and then we'll install the black connector plug. To assist in feeding these terminals through the firewall hole, I've just pushed them back, bent them over, and now I'm just going to run a small amount of tape around them to protect them when we pull them through the firewall. At this point here, I'm just going to grab an offcut of a zip tie. I'm going to tape it on to give us a feed. This will just assist us in locating it on the inside of the vehicle. I'm going to cut the nipple off of the feed tube through the firewall. With the nipple removed, it allows me to feed my wires through the open cavity. I'm going to give my harness a quick lubricate. And now I'm going to feed it through the cable gland hole in the firewall. I can now go inside the vehicle and grab that the other side. I'm going to start by removing this lower panel. There's four clips. With that removed, I'm going to reach up and grab our wire. So just up under the dash, reach up, we've found our wire coming through our firewall. We're just going to make sure we've got enough of that inside the vehicle. I'm then going to take the tape off the end of this wiring loom and put our black connector on. In our bag of goodies, we have the four-way black connector. This is to connect into the brake controller. Now that we've got our wire through the firewall, we can install this on our terminals. Making sure we've got our terminals up the correct way. We can insert them. Once we have them all inserted, we can install the safety lock. like so. We're now going to install our Red Arc brake controller module and we're going to install that and connect it to our wiring harness. This is our control module. Included in our bag of goodies is our mounting bracket. I'll show you how that works. So to install our control box onto our bracket we're just going to remove the hardware Sit the control box on over the top. Now, going to reinsert the bolts and tighten off the nuts. We do supply it with a nut cert plate, 
and a six mil metric bolt. Now that'll be used if your vehicle doesn't have particular factory fitted accessories. In this vehicle today, it's a 2023 Hilux Rogue. It already has a factory fitted accessory. So we're going to use the bolt that's existing in the vehicle. Now is also a great time to connect the Red Arc remote wiring harness kit. Now that's the one that comes in your Red Arc box. That's gonna get connected to the black eight-way connector at the front. The reason I'm connecting that now is it will be quite difficult to get to once this is mounted in place. You can still get to the power harness perfectly fine once it's mounted. On the passenger side below the glove box, there's a tab that's mounting an ECU. This particular vehicle has a second ECU in it with a bolt and a welded nut. We're going to position and sandwich our mounting bracket between these two steel surfaces. If your vehicle doesn't have that bolt, that's where you can use our supplied nut plate and six mil metric fastener. I've just lifted this into a position where it's parallel and then I'm just going to tighten it up we're going to run this remote wiring harness across toward the middle of the vehicle where we're going to install the switch in the center of the vehicle in front of the gear selector To remove this panel here, we're first going to take away the air conditioner control panel. Just remove this panel here. First of all, we need to remove the plastic shroud around the instrument cluster, just at the lower left corner alongside the steering wheel. I'm just going to pop that like so. Grab the light so you can see a bit better. So just pop that by pulling up at the bottom. We're now going to remove this entire section in one piece. To do that, I'm going to pull on the left, on the right hand side. And that's just going to come away. That's given us clean access to route our wire up. And we're going to push out our switch blank to install our TOPRO control knob. We now have our wiring harness to here. I'm going to use my finger behind just to push out one of these switch blanks. With the switch blank removed, once again we're going to go to our bag of goodies and we're going to pull out our new switch blank which is designed to accommodate for the red arc control knob. We're actually going to fit the red arc control knob to this first on the bench and then we'll come back into the car and we'll install it into that switch blank hole. This is our knob and this is our fascia. From behind we're going to insert him into there and he can only go one way up. We now need to open our Red Arc packaging, Red Arc box, and locate our thumb nut. This is what holds the switch together. Once again, it's only plastic, so we're just going to firm it up. It doesn't need to be too tight. Once we've completed that, we're going to use our fingers to move this potentiometer all the way to the left so all the way anti-clockwise it will stop we can then install our knob with the zero at the 12 o'clock mark straight up and down like so once we've installed it we'll just check that we can rotate our knob clockwise right through to number 10 where it should stop again at the 12 o'clock mark We'll now go and fit it into the vehicle. 
just going to poke my wire through the hole where we can connect it to our knob. And then we can just insert our knob with a firm click into the dash of the vehicle. I'm going to park our knob at about the halfway mark. That's about number five. The red arc riding is straight up and down. I'm going to reinstall the removed panelling. We can now connect our black four pin power harness to our brake controller. So this is our brake controller that we installed earlier. We're going to get our four pin connector with our black connector fitted and we're going to plug it in. Just like so, a nice firm click once it's connected. Now that it's connected, I'm going to just use a zip tie to hold our cabling up out of the way so it doesn't drape on the passenger's feet. That concludes everything inside the vehicle. We're going to leave the white connector end for now. And we're going to unravel the long end. Just to make this job a little bit easier, I am going to run some electrical tape just around the loose ends, because we'll be passing these underneath the vehicle and all the way to the rear cross member or near the spare tire. Just like so. I'm now going to feed this down underneath the vehicle. I'm going to show you where I'm going to do that. To keep things looking really neat, I'm actually going to pass it down through this hole here. So this is behind the wiring harness of the vehicle, the factory engine wiring harness, and down along with the brake lines to the rear of the vehicle. So from underneath the vehicle, now we've got this vehicle up on a vehicle hoist and that's solely to make it easier for us to film and demonstrate where we would like you to run this cable. Uh, this can be done all uh, as the vehicle is on the ground, um, simply with a, a mat or a roll, roller trolley or something underneath the vehicle. I'm going to reach up here and grab our wiring harness. This is the one we poked down loosely earlier. Okay, we just keep pulling him down. Once we've got all of the length down, we can start to then route that to the rear of the vehicle. Once we've got the harness to this location here, approximately in line with the centre of the uh, spare wheel, we can untape all of our ends. That was simply grouping the ends together. And what we're going to do now is run the three separate wires in three different directions. We can start by locating the black two pin connector, single wire black two pin connector. That's going to continue to run down the inside of the chassis, up and over the chassis, 
and into the left hand rear tail light area of the Hilux. That wire there is if you're, you're going to hook that one up if you're connecting pin 2 for permanent power. Otherwise, simply tape him off and leave him disconnected. The second wire is the red wire with the double uh, connectors on it. This one here is going to run across the centre brace above the spare wheel and connect to a fuse holder for the brake light signal. That is our brake light pickup. The last wire is single black with a blue crimped end on it. That's going to get connected up to our brake signal feed of our tow harness. I'm going to start by connecting my black one first and then I'll come back and show you the other two. So in the left hand rear below the tail light, we need to recover this fuse holder. To do that, I'm just going to pop my hand in there and untape it, like so. We're going to remove the dust cover. We're going to remove the fuse. Once we remove the fuse, we're going to connect the black connector in. Okay, that's now watertight fitting. We want to locate this fuse holder here, which is above the right hand side of the spare wheel carrier on this cross member. This fuse here has the red wires coming in the bottom of it. Okay, where there's three wires, red with a black trace. What I want you to do is I want you to remove the dust proof lid and now remove the blade type fuse. We're out our new plug and play harness across. What I want you to do next is insert the blade fuse into the fuse holder on the plug and play loom. We can now insert the dust cover to keep him all watertight and dust proof. Lastly, we'll connect the two pin black plug with the red wires to the mating half on the vehicle. Again, a waterproof, dustproof connection there. We can then zip tie that wiring harness across the chassis cross member. And lastly, we'll connect the blue electric service brakes wire to the blue wire, which has like a gray connector attached to it on the vehicle. Okay, we're gonna cut the gray connector off, untape it, and we're going to crimp these two together and then heat up the heat shrink to make this watertight. finish off our install, we're just going to cable tie up any excess. And continue putting some cable ties on the wire coming from the front. In the engine bay, we're going to put a couple of zip ties on the short wiring harness with the white connector. We're just going to tether that to the vehicle's factory wiring loom. The white connector should end up in this proximity here, which is just behind the accessory fuse box that's factory fitted in the N80 Hiluxes. This is where we'll use the final part of our kit, which is the engine wiring harness for the electric brake power. This is going to run power from the accessory fuse box with pre-terminated pins. It's got our earth and it's got our mating half of the white connector. 
we're going to start by connecting the mating half of the white connector together. Make sure it goes click. We're going to remove the accessory fuse box. First, remove the lid. Secondary, using the tabs at the back, we're going to remove the holder itself. Okay, we're going to feed our wire harness the uh, red and the pink up into the fuse box from underneath. Like so. Our, our white is our earth. That one there is going to go direct on to the battery negative terminal. To connect these fuse pins into the fuse box, we're just going to use a screwdriver to eject the rail on each end. That's going to give us access to the bottom. Let's see if I can get you a little bit more length just to show you cleanly. What we want to do is we want to put these two wires right down this end of the fuse box, so closest to the firewall of the motor vehicle. We're going to start by putting the red wire in the very end terminal. Goes click, followed by the pink wire in the second from end terminal. It can only go in one way. You know they're in, because they make that nice click. Okay, once that's in we can reinsert the rail, we can reclip the fuse box on its mounting bracket. We can insert our two supplied 25 amp fuses. Okay, the red wire is for our electric brakes, the pink wire is for our pin number two hot wire. You could choose to leave pin number two unpowered if you haven't connected the single pin a single black wire connector at the back left hand side of the tail light you could choose to leave that fuse out. Most vehicles uh, will already have reverse if you do require pin 2 as power you insert that and you connect it up behind the left hand rear tail light. We're going to now put our earth on using a 12mm socket We're just going to put one more zip tie on this white connector to make sure it doesn't move around. I'm just going to zip tie that to an existing loom. If your vehicle already has fuses in its allocated slots, feel free to write what the fuse is in the blank section of the decal. Reinstall the lid and now we'll check and test our electric brake install. With an incandescent globe type test light with our wire clip to ground, we want to check pin number two. Now it's written on the lid. Make sure it's got permanent power. Once we've confirmed pin number two has permanent power, we're going to move to pin number five. And we're going to go inside the vehicle and check the brake controller. You see that the Topro knob on the dash is now lit up and flashing its calibration sequence. We want to confirm that it's working by dialing the brake controller all the way up to number 10, pressing and holding on the knob and checking that the trailer brake service wire lights up our test light at full brightness. If it's done that, we can now move to pressing the brake pedal on the motor vehicle and checking that it also lights up that test light at full brightness. Lastly, consult your Red Arc owner's manual included with your Tow Pro for the operation of the brake controller and its calibration sequence and how to complete calibration. There is also a leaflet if you have IQ7 
or hydraulic disc brakes on your trailer or caravan. Have a read of that, there's a special mode you can put the brake controller in. For all brake controller inquiries and technical support, you can ring Red Arc. For anything to do with the wiring harness or questions, please feel free to call Richards Auto Electrical.